In this video I will show you how you can find what's wrong with your AC or recirculation flap on your car when the car goes from hot to cold by itself or you put it on, on hot but it doesn't go on hot or you put it on cold on AC and it starts using heat in the car. These problems are related to the recirculation flap, the recirculator flap button you press it and nothing happens it, or maybe it turns on for a moment and then it turns off or it just doesn't work at all only works in reverse sometimes maybe not even then and it needs to work in reverse because you don't want to get uh, when you reverse the car the exhaust fumes they might go inside the car when you reverse and you don't want that to happen at all and uh, recirculation flap and this problem when the AC and hot air they mix strange they just the car goes from hot to cold by itself they're all related to one part and especially one sensor inside this motor this is the actuator positioning sensor recirculation V154 V154 for Volkswagen Polo um, this is a motor with a sensor built in. It has a potentiometer that will detect at which position the motor is and it will send it to the computer of the car and then, you know, everything starts going bad from there. This is how you really figure out that there is a problem. First, you see it's not working as you expect it. But I'm doing a few tests here. This video is a bit long, so please don't skip it watch it all the way to the end just to make sure that you really know how to do this i show you everything here not no part is cut removed from this video i could have made it three minutes long but then you wouldn't really know how to change it right keep watching to see the tests and maybe you try the same tests on your car to make sure that you have this problem now it's inside no light inside but no light then reversed now remove reversed it was on for a second reversed press it's recirculating and now it's closed again open again move reverse it's closed again AC It's open. This is working. Closed. Open. Press it in. Ah, it's open. But now it's reversed. Not reversed. Not in, in if it's not in reverse, it doesn't do anything. You see it works. If 
could go up and down. Let's try hitting. Hitting, yeah. Sometimes you might have problem with the heating going from cold and okay, now it's on. Now it's on. It's open. Light is kind of on. Okay, now that you know this is the problem you have on your car, first thing is to remove the glove box. I will put a link in the description for a video on how to do that. I will not show here because it's too many things to show already. So click the link in the description to see how to remove the glove box. Under the dashboard on the, the side of the fan, of the recirculator, of the AC fan, you see this little motor. It's it's uh, always this is always next to the recirculator flap, and that's the recirculator flap on the passenger side. You go under the dashboard, and on a corner here, you see there is the recirculator flap, and this is this is, these are T15 screws, Torx 15. In case you need to know, this is Torx 15, and you use Torx 20. T20 screws to remove the glove box just so you have all the parts T15 and T20 really this is all you need T15 yeah. here you have two screws to remove the one below here it's not too difficult to remove this one just the screwdriver I have is a bit not uh, great for this uh, this is uh, with a, f a flexible extension it is useful to have the flexible extension on a, or a ratchet screwdriver for the glove box to remove that. Make sure you click the link to see the video in the description. If it's not available yet, subscribe and you will see it soon. That's the screw. You can tell these screws from the color. They have this golden color. The second screw for the motor, for the flap motor, is above this connector here. And it's also close to the um, motor you see there are other screws there you don't need to remove all of them only these two screws there is this connector in the way this is for the AC fan for the blower motor I thought I'll just remove this one to first make sure that motor doesn't start for any reason this for sure you should do it while the key is not in the ignition and the setting for the fan is to zero but now it's unplugged anyway so it won't start once the screws are removed you wiggle it a little bit and the part comes out you can tell from this uh, blue maybe this one might not be blue it might be red or it might be black it depends on the car t15 yeah t15 those are the screws are removed from there and it has a small connector it's good it's hanging from the connector like that the 
the connector cannot go the wrong way, so you don't need to no need to take pictures of it, but you could if you wanted to, but you can only put it the right way. The most important thing is to remember you should take a picture of this area here on how those the gears are set up before you remove them because when you put it back you have to put it back the same way so this is the all the way closed the motor was in the all the way closed position so it should be the same it's better if you have the motor in fully closed before you remove it it's you can't move the gears on the motor and uh, maybe you could but it's uh, not a great idea this is the whole assembly for the positioning motor, the, the recirculation flap motor, V, it was V154, and that's the one screw that goes in there and the other screw below, and this, when it rotates, it moves the white gears that you see so before, and they have to be in the same position before you install them or after you reinstall it. 6Q281937 that's the part number of the assembly and this is the motor the motor part number is 6Q2907511 the electrical connector is here there doesn't seem to be any damage there so usually this is not a problem here i'll show you soon what really is the problem with this motor i fixed it before and i didn't want to show it there were a lot of uh, comments asking about showing this but it's a long story to open it and just to show it in a video so unfortunately this thing started making troubles again and yeah i just took it apart now you see this it's a bit uh, kind of a locking system there all you really have to do to remove the motor from the holder to pull with your fingers you don't even need a tool like this with your hands you pull these tabs away and push the motor out while you're doing that that's it it's uh, it's coming out now the third clip there it's a bit difficult it's very important that you have a bit of patience when you do these things the last thing you want is to break any of these clips if you do break them, you have the part number so you can get a replacement motor. They're not expensive. And maybe to replace it with a new one, it's a better idea so you don't have to open it again. In I, I had to do it a few years, maybe many years, four or five years ago, I think I did this. And I wasn't recording it then, but now you have it recorded in 4K. So... Yeah, that's the motor it, it's out a lot of these parts of this video could have been removed but i thought it's better you see all the steps really so you decide by yourself if it's worth it to do it by yourself or to take it to a shop or mechanic to do it or if it's worth it to repair this potentiometer the motor or you just want to get a new one if you can get a new one cheap it's uh, maybe a better idea but i i fixed it before so i thought okay i'll i'll fix it again spoiler alert wd-40 and yeah okay you know everything works with wd-40 you have these clips here it's a bit difficult actually to to remove it from from these clips and that's why I didn't shorten this part and it's not sp speeding it up and I broke yeah I did that before yeah even though it's cracked I didn't remove it because it actually still works if it's cracked maybe not this one but the one on the right there it uh, it still works and only those two are cracked that's why I have to be very careful with this a screwdriver a really fine screwdriver to go under the clip you only you do you lift it a little bit until the tension keeps it up you see like this it doesn't go back where it was don't go further than that like that 
it just has to sit like this and you go and move on to the next one taking care of not touching the previous clips because if you touch them they will go back to the spot they were yeah you see it go they go they are a bit lifted that's all you want now so you go around and you do the same with all the clips eventually okay now on this one it doesn't really doesn't really do anything but they wouldn't stay up because they're broken but i i just move uh, yeah this one went back you see i left it back how it was the important thing is you do this slowly slowly until they are all raised and then you push them a little bit further until the cup just comes out by itself you will see it's really if you do it slowly patiently it's no big deal no clips will be broken and that's very important because if you break the clips i really don't know how to how to keep this it's important to keep this area inside the motor dust free and also the cup is holding gears inside you will see soon uh, if you break the clips you will have to order a new motor they are not expensive but still it's a it's a long story to install it and uninstall it i don't know if you can use the car without this motor i'm not sure i didn't try to start it without the motor being plugged in so yeah try not to break the clips Okay, now the cup is off. You see those holes in the cup? They act as a support for the gears, so the gears stay stay without moving. That on the left is the motor, and the gears on on this side they they increase the force of the motor, so it's more strong. They also reduce the speed. Um, and here I actually did a repair before. The thing that needs to be done here really is to clean the potentiometer contacts inside this blue part. That is the problem. And originally, when you open it the first time, this brown stuff is not there. It's just a black cover and that's a dust cover for the potentiometer. And I put this because I broke it. I broke those plastic pieces and I didn't have any replacement parts for it. But I thought some kind of glue I put there, I can't remember what I put there. And it's pointless to really try to remove this potentiometer from there. And you don't need to. All you need to do is on, on the side that you see there, on that side on the right, that's where you're supposed to open it. Always it's a good idea to make markings on the gears so you know where, they, where they're supposed to be and yeah you see that's that's how it opens this brown stuff wasn't there the plastic dust cover was made to be able to open but yeah i probably i forced it or something i don't know it's broken on both sides but if you broke break it you can put a bit of glue like this on top and it actually it still works there it still keeps the dust cover in place those are the contacts, the potentiometer, you see the tracks on the left, on the right side there is no, no, no dust, no anything. But this is how they work normally. When they move left or right, the resistance increases or decreases between the contacts. So this is how the computer of the car will know at which position the potentiometer is. This is how the potentiometer works. But when the dust comes out from these tracks this is a semiconductive material 
uh, when the dust comes out then it starts to go crazy and yeah WD-40 spraying in the contacts now let me tell you this I did this with the contact cleaner as it should be normally the potentiometers like this you don't wrap them because you will ruin the the this surface is very sensitive and you wouldn't be able to open these contacts without damaging them anyway but if you, you let's say you use a q-tip to wrap this track you shouldn't do that it's a bad idea but if you use contact cleaner it doesn't last for some reason the the contact cleaner works it will clean the the this carbon material i don't know exactly what it is there it will clean it but after a few months you will have the same problem again and you will open the car again i noticed as soon as i started using the wd-40 that's when i even forgot about this part it didn't make any problems anymore so a few times you can use wd-40 you really soak it in wd-40 and then you put it upside down so it comes out you wipe it with the paper once you're done you close this like you see make sure the little edge there it goes inside the potentiometer and this is pretty much it for this thing it's fixed now you remember the holes there is only one right way to install this so make sure you the holes on those gears are aligned to the cup before you put it back and these are the it's the last view of this motor hopefully i don't want to open it again and yeah you just align it align it to to the body of the motor and press it gently from all sides equal pressure until it snaps on shouldn't shouldn't take yeah that's it that was pretty loud once these clips lock in it's all good make sure they are all engaged all locked so no dust goes inside the motor there yeah, this is done <laughs> now the hard part is to put it back in the car no actually the hard hard part is to remove it from the car and the hardest part is to put it back okay here press it press press this on the clips make sure you put the connector where it's supposed to it should look like this this video is really long already i mean if you've been watching so far thanks for that and maybe subscribe for more videos and give it a like so share a comment write a comment if you had to do this or if you have this problem and you take it to a mechanic that's the place where you reinstall it these are the gears the white gears have to be in this position that's the closed position the recirculator flap is closed so if they did move you can move it with the hand back in place it's a bit difficult to align it here the main tips i can give you here the the body of this recirculator motor has to go behind the plastic pieces where it's screwed in you see here it's kind of trying to go in front this is not the right way you have to remove it and reinstall it if this happens it's okay the the problem is that you have to go under the car the view here is from the dash from from the glove box but i am under the car trying to trying to get it get it working get it in there and yeah now it's starting to look how, how it should but then i remember that i didn't plug in the connector and i wasn't sure if i would be able to plug in the connector easily afterwards so i i removed it i took it out i'm gonna take it out and plug in the connector before installing it this is how really it came out the idea is you just do the reverse step from instead of removing you put it back it's easy to say it but i thought it's better to show you the good things and the bad things i mean there are a lot of it's very 
it's very tricky here. It can be a bit annoying, you can get frustrated. Just take a break if, if it's too hard. I mean, you might get tired from sitting in a strange position. Take a break, drink some water, walk a bit and you try again. Eventually you will get it in. Most important, don't put it like this. You see the blue gear is a bit outside. It's not supposed to be like that. So wiggle it a bit more. The gears have to engage with each other, align like this. There should be a straight line between the white gear, blue gear, white gear. Also the holes have to align. Holes are aligned. And yeah, now it's time to get it uh, installed. Here the focus was on the some other place. The screw is installed, T15, another one there on top. Now watch how hard it is. One time falls. They fall all the time. Eventually I had to stop the recording so I can get the screw in and continue it now while recording. That's where the screw is supposed to go in. You tighten it but not like super tight. You remember how, how difficult it was to remove it. Same way, it's plastic so try not to go too far. Plug in the, the fan, the heater blower fan, the AC fan. These are the screws for the glove box, I'll have to put them back, but that's another video, the link in the description. Before you put the glove box back in, test it. It's closed. Now let's see if it works. It's opening. Alright. Yeah, this is most important, the gears are aligned. No clicking noises, no any, anything. Now it's open. And now it's closed. Start the car. Now it's closed, go on coming from outside. Works perfectly now, just as it should. The recirculator motor open. works perfectly now and it will not do also go from cold to hot by itself. It's uh, aligned well with the, with the white gears, the respirator flap works perfectly, so it's really done. This works. It's good to test it before you put back the glove box in case you need to remove it. Put back this uh, protection for the... This is the protection for the airbag part. And that's it. The recirculator, the recirculator in your Volkswagen Polo 9N, Volkswagen Polo Mark IV, how it's called also. Now it's working, the AC is working full cold. This might be a problem when the recirculator uh, doesn't work like this. The, the air might mix with the hot air from the car, so you really don't want that. When you turn on the AC, you want full AC. Neutral. Recirculation on. Recirculation on and stays on. Recirculation off. Recirculation on. Aircon.
Pressing pressure on. Pressing pressure flap off. Reverse turns on by itself. Doesn't show, but it's there. Hot air, hot, getting hot. Recirculation. If this video helped you, make sure you write a comment below, tell other people who need advice with this, how to fix it, if you have any comments to add on how to make this better, also if you want, give a like to the video, so the video shows to more people who might have this problem, I mean I've seen a few times this video was requested, but it, it, I wouldn't do it unless the problem was there and this time it was there but now it's gone, the problem is gone also share this video, tell your friends to subscribe to the channel um, there are videos about how to do multiple things how to fix, fix things in your home, different, different things how to videos and hopefully you will get to make more videos to show more interesting stuff thanks for watching subscribe like and share and i will see you next time nice bye